them. While we pay to keep our politicians fighting, how do we the people rise up and solve the great challenges of our time? We do it by embracing freedom and liberty. There may be no such thing as a free lunch, but this hour is as close as it gets. Welcome to A Free Solution. Hey, it is Larry Sharp. I am here on A Free Solution, WYSL, Rochester, New York. And you might say, Larry, I'm accustomed to seeing you on the Sharp Way, because usually that's where I am. But today, Tuesday, 1 p.m., I am here with you. Very happy to be here. You know, you've probably heard that I've been bouncing around New York State recently. Kind of a thing that I do. Traveling to all of the counties and meeting people. And one of the things, sadly, that I come across often is pain. The problem, though, is how do we actually, how does that pain manifest itself? Many times it manifests itself in anger or vitriolic screaming or yelling. We're mad at each other a lot. And when I would talk about, hey, what about the other guy, the other gal, the person who thinks different, differently than you? Very often what I hear is that person's bad or evil or dumb or stupid or some one word story that makes them the bad guy. And now we can't talk to him anymore. The problem is that person is in our state, in our country. They vote, they produce jobs or produce labor or something. They're doing stuff in our world. Not so easy to just cut them off. And it reminded me, believe it or not, as kind of like a marriage. And you might say, all right, why marriage? Well, because we're kind of stuck together. We have common assets. We have a common history. We may have children together, right? We have lots of things together, legally bound by more than one issue, right? So kind of like that. And in my previous life, or even my real life when I'm not running for office, I'm a business consultant and trainer, coach, all those things, teacher. And one of the things that I have done in the past is to help fix executive teams that aren't working well together. Guy A and gal B aren't talking, gal B and gal C aren't talking, gal C and guy A is not talking, whatever, they're not talking, they're having problems, yelling at each other, whatever the case may be. And as I've fixed many of those, and when I say fix, I don't mean magically make better. I mean, manage to where it's now getting better. That's how I define fix. That it is now being managed and it's getting better. People started asking me to help them in their couples. So every once in a while, I've done some couples work. I can't call it couples therapy because I require a license for that in New York State. And well, so it's couples work. How about that? Many people have been through couples therapy or couples work. And if you have been, you know that most of the time it doesn't work. Most of the therapists actually aren't very good. That's a fact, most aren't. About 80 to 90% of people who go to therapy still get divorced, doesn't work. Not that you shouldn't do it. If you think it's right for you, please do so. I'm not judging how you handle your relationship. I'm just talking about some data. So one of the things I do is not what most do. Most therapists, when you talk to them, will basically affirm one or both of the people and just say, yes, you're right, your feelings are valid, blah, blah, blah. Hey, other person, what can you do to change this? And they begin to ask both sides to compromise. The general rule, it doesn't work. Why? Because in this case, we'll say it's a marriage, we'll say a traditional male and female marriage. Well, they're mad at each other. So the husband's mad at the wife. 
So he doesn't want to do something for her. He's mad at her. She doesn't do anything for him. She's mad at him. You might go, but Larry, it's, it's logical. They got to be smart. They got kids. They got all the assets. They got to do a logical thing. That's not how it works. Particularly, so that you know, if you've been through this, the people who love you most, the people who are closest to you, know how to hurt you like nobody else. They know what buttons to push. And you've had your buttons pushed, I'm sure you have, by someone who was close to you because they know how. That doesn't have to be marriage, by the way. That can be brother, sister, mom, dad. That can be all types of close relationships, even close friends. But clearly, in a marriage, that's going to be true, right? So in this case, it's a marriage. They've pushed the other button. They have made each one very angry. And there is a lot of pain and a lot of baggage. So now when here comes therapist saying, hey, what, why don't you do for the other? They're like, no. Or worse, they lie. And they go, yeah. And then find an excuse and then don't do the thing. And things get worse. You might go, Larry, that's impossible to stop. You are talking about a situation that's impossible. No. I'm saying the tactics are bad. That's what I'm saying. When two people who've been together for a long time have hurt each other for a long time and deeply, they can't just fix things. It doesn't work. There's too much emotional baggage. There's too much stuff to just make it work. You've got to find an actual neutral third party. Yes, an actual neutral third party who does not want necessarily compromise, who wants to focus on the number one thing, which is the relationship. Not the happiness necessarily of the individual at this moment. That will come first piece, relationship. So if I'm talking to a couple, in this case, traditional married couple, I'm going to go to both. Whichever one seems to be the most aggressive to me. In this case, I'm going to say it's the male. That isn't always true. Let's say in this case it is. I'll say, hey, a very important question. Do you want to be in this relationship? And very often, he'll start dodging the question. Well, she does this and she does that and she does this and she never did that. And I go, great. Question still stands. Do you want to be in a relationship? Well, if she does this and if she does that and if she does this, I'm not asking that. What I'm asking you is you want to be in a relationship. I don't even care what other things are. If he actually answers no, I'll say, why are you here? And then two things will happen. Or one of two things. They go, well, no, I do want to be here. I'm just mad. Okay, breakthrough. Literally breakthrough. Or he'll say, you know what, you're right. I don't want to be here. Great, don't waste your time money on me. Go get divorced. Why are, you, why are you here? Win-win. Then I go to the other one. Same thing. And she'll do exactly the same thing. Only if he does, blah, blah, blah. Why? Because all the anger, because all the vitriol, because all the pain is coming out. But once I get them both to say, yes, I want to be here. Now we start talking. Now we start talking about what is best for the relationship. I'm the third party. I don't have the baggage they have. I mean, in my relationship, I do, but not in theirs. So in their relationship, I have nobody, no baggage at all. I'm good. So I get them to agree to that. And then I say, okay, what's going to work for the relationship? And now each of them begins to have a conversation. We talk about this. So now he isn't doing anything for her. He's still mad at her. He, she's not doing anything for him. She is still mad at him. But they will both do something for the relationship. Nobody did not bring in kids, assets. No. The relationship. The third party brings in the concept of the relationship. The third party is able to have both sides talk and try to fix the relationship. That is your best chance of marriage 
not therapy, because I'll get in trouble. Marriage work, working. Doesn't mean it will work. It may still fail. This is not magic. But now I got a shot. Maybe it will work if I get both sides talking about a third entity to stop moving forward. Maybe we do it. Why would I bring that up? Marriage. What's wrong with you, Larry? That is the value of a third party in politics. You have watched it. Left versus right, fighting each other for literally decades now, making horrible, horrible pain and scarring on both sides, yelling and screaming, calling to the names. You see it. You saw it this week. You see it the week before. You keep seeing it. Each side yelling at the other, calling names. And what's actually happening? Who's getting helped? Are the kids doing well? No. Are the people around them doing well? And if you have been around a couple that's fighting really badly, do you want to be around them? Of course not. If it was your parents, how did you feel? When it was you, if it was you, how did you feel? Everybody is miserable. You have to work towards fixing it or end it. Both of those work. Usually fixing is better, almost always. Again, not a 100% rule, but almost always, that's a better option. But how do you do it? If you don't have somebody competent as a third party making it work, you can't. It's doomed to fail. I see that here now in our own country. I wish that we would look at third parties realistically and stop looking at the short term and going, oh my God, if I vote third party this time, the world ends. But if I don't, oh my God, the world won't end today. But tomorrow it will. The day after it will. Every single election is the most important election in the world. They've been telling us that for 40 years. Is each one the most important? Has each one gone your way? It has not. The world hasn't ended. But it's on its way off a cliff. You can solve it with some really good family work. If you only had someone who could do that. Wouldn't that be great? Am I right? Am I wrong? Tell me. 585-346-3000. Larry Sharp of Free Solution. W-Y-S-L. Back with your calls and the chat after the break. Your business relies on computers and technology to operate. Slow, unreliable networks and servers can cause unplanned downtime and affect your bottom line. The experts at Simple Tech Innovations are here to help. Their preventative maintenance program ensures that your computers and network are kept up to date and monitored for any issues, keeping your business running smoothly. They also help clients achieve HIPAA, PCI, and New York State cybersecurity compliance to keep your network safe and secure. Whatever your business IT needs are, Simple Tech Innovation should be your first call. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Call them today for a free consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. Hey, this is Kevin Wilson, host of A Free Solution. You ever need a tool for just one project? but didn't want to spend the cash for something you'd use just once or twice? Well, there's a new tool library in Rochester where you can borrow just the thing you need instead of buying a new one. It's called the Tool Shed from the Southeast Area Coalition, and membership starts at just $25 a year. Use it for home projects or to support your business. Learn more and become a member at seektoolshed.org. That's S-E-A-C toolshed.org. Available in the WYSL store at WYSL1040.com. Official top quality tees, hoodies, and coffee mugs depicting the colorful WYSL logo or the already famous Mount Worstmore line of merch depicting Mount Rushmore style are for worst presidents. Of course, you know who is front and center up on that mountain. WISL official items make perfect gifts, or they're a great way for you to make a personal statement. Locally produced and sold only in the WISL store at WISL1040.com. A free solution on the WYSL station. 
Yes, Larry Sharp here on a free solution talking about family work. I know you didn't expect to tune in to WYSL Rochester, New York and hear family work, but you did. And it made sense, I hope. People are talking about it. Look, if you've been through it, you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We need to be thinking like that for our state, for our nation. Because there are actually two levels here. Level one is the elites, the establishment that runs our state and sadly runs our country. And the rest is the average person, right? There, does the average Democrat or the average Republican want to hate the other? No, not at all. The average Democrat does not want to hate the average Republican. The average Republican does not want to hate the average Democrat. So why do so many? Because we've gone out of our way at the elite level to set up a system to encourage that. The elites don't mind. They're happy if we fight, we yell and scream. They're happy. They're the equivalent in the family law world of being the family court system and being the lawyers. And if you've been through family court, when a marriage is breaking up, you know who makes the money. The court makes the money and the lawyers make the money. The family gets just totally devastated. The family loses all their money, everything. Only person making money, the court and the lawyers. That's us. They're watching us fight. They're watching our families fall apart. They sit back and grift and make a bunch of cash and keep acting like they're on our side. They care about us. It's for the future or the kids. You're just gonna be punished now. Yeah, yell at him or her now. That's what happens. Literally, our family court system is now also our political system. That's how bad it is. I'm asking that we consider making real change, thinking differently about how we communicate with each other, thinking differently about this horrible two-party system. Really, think about the children. Really, let's do that. Let me grab a couple people in the chat real fast. A bunch of people in the chat. I appreciate all the uh, all the people uh, popping in here. Brandon asks, hey, Larry, do you like a flat tax? Could we have a flat tax and UBI and tax the UBI? Wow. There's a lot in that one, Brandon. The first one is, do I like the idea of a flat tax? I do. I like the idea of it. Depends how it's implemented, of course. But the concept is a good concept. If we actually had a simplified tax code, yes. If we just made it simple, meaning, I'm sorry, if we just made it flat, but it was just as convoluted as it is now, it wouldn't help. The wealthy would still not pay and the poor people still get hammered. It wouldn't change. So if we were to simplify it and say flat tax, that's it. And if we could actually simplify it, and not go past 10%. Why? The church wants 10%. God wants 10%. You want more than God. Take your 10% and be happy. So if you could have an actual flat tax, simplified tax, where it's just how much did you make times 10%, there's your cut. Government, like the mob, there's your cut. It's better. It would be better. However, You've also got to add a minimum, what I mean by that. Say, for example, I'm making this number up for sake of argument. I don't know the actual number, but say the number is 40,000. So up to 40,000, no tax. Again, that number may change. I made that number up with this conversation, maybe higher or lower, or maybe even by state, I'm not really sure. But a certain number, and then after that number, so you make say $40,000, no tax, once you make $1 over that, you tax that $1 and on. That makes it fair to people who are either starting out, who've fallen down, who aren't making much money, any of those situations in their life where they haven't made the step to make big dollars in their life, purposefully or not, whether they did it on purpose, didn't really care, or whether they just had setbacks, whatever the case may be. So I don't wanna hammer them. So you want a number. After that, sure, if it's simplified. Would I want a UBI? No. Why wouldn't I want a UBI? 
UBI gives a bunch of people money who don't need it. If you're going to do any type of UBI, I would go with what I call the GIB, the Graduated Income Boost. It's actually on my website, if anybody cares. And that is under a certain number. The number we selected was $36,000. That if you're making under $36,000, you will get some type of stipend. It'll be low if you set by 36. But the goal is the floor is 18 and the government helps you step up. You step up to 36. So there is no cliff. Right now, there's a cliff. So once you get a certain amount, lose everything. I want people to walk up to that. It's a better bet. So if you're making over 36,000, you don't get, you would get no state benefits, right? Over 36. You would still get federal benefits if you had that, but at state level, no state benefits. Once you're making over 36,000, you would still have federal benefits if you rated any or deserved any, whatever the case may be. I would not want to tax that. So, but again, that makes sure that wealthy people or people making more money don't get a check and you're working your way up. So as you make more, you still get more, giving you an incentive to move forward if you want to move forward. I hope that was clear. So, yes. Um, Logic actually says, interested to hear more about the UBI, UBI policy as well. I'm not a fan of UBI, but maybe it would depend on how it's set up for me. I hope I explained how it's set up. I think that makes sense. Yes. All righty, Ross says, LarrySharp.com, there are other options, vote gold, Libertarian Larry. Thank you, my friend. L Let me bring that up. Why would I spend an entire segment talking about third parties? Because I think now's the time. You can see guys like Andrew Yang running around who talk about UBI, or used to at least, unless you'll be still in the UBI train. You used to be talking about that, Brandon. You can see it. He's more popular now than he's ever been, talking about third party, his forward party, which, by the way, did endorse my candidacy. So that was nice. And you see me running again. You see other people trying to run. And at the same time, while you see this moving, you see the backlash from the state trying their best to shut it all down. Why would the state care so much about shutting it all down? because they know I'm right. That's the reason. They know that Yang is right when it comes to third parties. We know that he is. This is the answer. Without it, we just keep fighting. Things just keep getting worse and worse. So thank you for that comment, Ross. I, I appreciate it tremendously. Yes. So, and <laughs> yes, Byron says, it's like the Dems and Republicans are our dysfunctional parents. And they're, and they're battling for custody of the children, which is us citizens. Yes, absolutely. It's just like that. I, this is the saying I bring up all the time. And some of you may love this. Democrats want to be your mom. Republicans want to be your dad. I don't want to be either. I want to be your brother. That's what I want to be. I want to be your brother. I, you don't have to do what I say. I don't have, I'm not going to protect you or give you stuff. But if you need that ride to the airport, I got you. Right? I'm going to be your brother. If you need some help, you move in, I'll show up. It's fine. I'm your brother. So when you need me, help out. I'll help out. If you don't need me, we'll call, talk once in a while, maybe see each other on Christmas. Nice. I don't want to live with you. You don't want to live with me. We're good on that. But I'm your brother. And that's the point. Democrats, Republicans want to be your mom and your dad. Libertarians want to be your sibling. Just your brother. Just your sister. Way better. Way, way better. And look, if you don't like your brother, you don't have to spend that much time with him. Well, you can't. Anyway, your brother is here. 585-346-3000. Larry Sharp, a free solution. WYSL, Rochester, New York. Back with your chat and your calls after the break.
Pray for the USA. AM 1040 Avon Rochester, FM 92.1 Rochester, and FM 95.5 Spencer Port. Here's the news and NBC forecast on WYSL. For tonight, mostly cloudy skies expected with a low temperature of 62, and there will be a threat for an isolated rain shower, especially early on tonight. For Wednesday, we're going to be looking at a high temperature of 73 degrees, so back in the 70s. Mostly cloudy to start, but some sun in the afternoon, and there will also be the chance for an isolated shower in the afternoon as well. For Wednesday night, mostly cloudy for low of 59. I'm First Alert Meteorologist Alex Bielfeld on your WYSL stations. WYSL! Rock On! Harley Davidson and Rock On Power Sports, West Henrietta Road. Shop the greatest selection of legendary Harleys and save big on a wide array of used bikes. And Rock On Power Sports has rides from Honda, Kawasaki, and Yamaha. Rock On has a helpful staff to save you big money. The Rock On Service Department has expert technicians and a great supply of parts to get and keep you on two wheels. WYSL listeners get $500 off used motorcycles while supplies last. Rock On has side-by-sides, ATVs, and jet boats, too. Anything that's fun and goes fast. On and off-road and on the water, shop the all-new Rock On first. Rock On Harley-Davidson and Rock On Motorsports, 2600 West Henrietta Road. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Call 424-2120. Visit rockonharleydavidson.com. Why do businesses choose to move their website from Wix and Squarespace to Simple Tech Innovations? Maybe it's their excellent customer service or attention to detail. Maybe it's their ability to give a truly customized solution. Or perhaps they just like the fact that Simple Tech is a local small business that builds great relationships with its clients. Whatever the reason may be, you can rest assured knowing that the local team at Simple Tech has your best interest in mind when building or updating your website. They're hands-on and love helping customers achieve their goals. But don't take my word for it. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. If your website doesn't match your dreams or isn't achieving your goals, give the professionals at Simple Tech Innovations a call today for a consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. The summer celebration continues with new savings and selection waiting for you at Victor Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Anthony Drive off Route 96 in Victor. It's fun in the sun every day when you drive one of America's favorite four-wheel drive vehicles from Victor, like the 22 Jeep Cherokee Limited 4x4 in diamond black crystal pearl coat, just $3.39 a month for 36 months. Must be returning lesson. The 2022 Ram 1500 Classic Warlock Quad Cab 4x4 pickup in hydro blue pearl coat is just $2.69 a month for 39 months. Must be Conquest Lessee. The 22 Jeep Compass Latitude 4x4 is just $2.99 a month for 36 months. Must have Conquest over returning lessee. First payment, DMV taxes and fees due at signing. Other conditions may apply. See dealer for details. We're here to fully serve Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram customers in Victor, Canandaigua, Macedon, Fairport, and throughout the Metro and Finger Lakes. Victor Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram 6560 Anthony Drive in Victor. Cooler nights lately should remind you the great weather of the past months will soon be replaced by bitter cold. If you think today's gas prices are out of control, think what it might cost to heat your home or business this winter. Here's how to slash those costs. With Air and More Infrared Zone heaters, you may save up to 50% compared to just using your furnace. Turn down your central heat and stay cozy in the room you're using. Heat from Air and More Infrared is healthier. No combustion that dries out your nose, sinuses, and skin. You get even quiet heat that fills rooms with warmth, not dust and blower oxygen rich and moist air and more heaters are completely safe no exposed hot surfaces no heating elements to pose shock or fire hazards and they're completely safe around pets and children and have easy roll casters to make relocation a snap with new copper ptc technology there are no bulbs to replace ever save big on heating bills and stay comfy and healthy this winter buy direct and get lowest prices anywhere on the web call 800-707-8725 or visit air the letter n more.com that's air the letter n more.com The market is a scary place right now, but Advantage has a way to calm your fears. 
a 10-month CD at 2.5% APY. Instead of riding a crazy wave, rest assured with a share certificate at 2.5%. Protect your money and start saving today. It's smart and it's a sure thing. Now you see why Advantage is banking made simple. Go to AdvantageFCU.org for details. Limited time offer, membership subject to eligibility, federally insured by NCUA. $500 minimum opening deposit required. A free solution on the WYSL stations. Yes, it is Larry Sharp back here on a free solution. And you might say, you know what? I like this free solution. You should. It's a great show. And you can actually listen to it or watch it if you want to. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 1 p.m. I'm here on Tuesday, and we got a slew of cool people. Kevin Wilson's on, Tim O'Connor's on, Craig Miles is on. Oh, my God, we got all the cool people here. All the cool kids are here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 1 p.m. here, WYSL, Rochester, New York. If you miss it, I, I don't know what's wrong with you. It's crazy. It's a great, great show. I want to move on with the tax piece to something that's important here in New York City for me. If you're listening, you may know that I live in New York City. I live in Queens. And I've had to pull my daughter out of school. Not I've had to, but I kind of feel like I had to. And I, I brought, my oldest daughter has just left for college. I pulled her out of school early last year because the school system was a disaster. I got her to graduate early, got off to college as soon as I possibly can. She was taking college courses last year. My youngest, I pulled her out of elementary school because the system was so bad and so broken, I decided to homeschool her. And I didn't think I would ever be a homeschooler. I never thought that. It's funny because I always supported homeschoolers. Back in 2018 when I was running, I totally supported homeschoolers. I always did. I just never thought I would be one. And then I found myself being one. So... I'm glad I wasn't a jerk to them because they were able to help me tremendously. So I guess being nice does pay off sometimes. That time it did. Why do I bring this up? Because there's a new school's chancellor in New York City. So New York City has decided that the right answer is not localized control. But New York City says we have to have a leader who controls all the students throughout all five boroughs. We're gonna call them chancellor what could go wrong, and he's going to run all about a million students. Yes, there's about a million students in New York City. One guy's going to run them all. What could go wrong? Well, today, he's letting people know. Tomorrow's the first day of school in New York City. And you know what they're going to focus on? I'm not joking when I say this. He said it. Literacy. I know some of you, your head exploded. Please put a top back on. Going to focus on literacy. This is school. What were you focusing on before? Like, isn't that the, like the number one thing that school should be focusing on? Reading and writing over anything else? Now, other things are important. Don't get me wrong. You don't want to only read and write. But if you can't read and write, Kind of all the rest is useless. So you probably want to focus on the reading and writing part. And according to him, now we're going to start. Okay. Well, I guess <laughs> better late than never, I guess. But where you been? And someone actually asked him. I'm not the only crazy one. Someone actually said, okay. What, what happened before? He said, well, we haven't done it well. We haven't focused on it. That's what he said. For decades. Yeah. That's where your tax money is going. No wonder you don't want taxes. No wonder you don't want, you know, school tax. I get it. I understand completely. That's where we are right now. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on every time centralized control has worked. Finished. Doesn't work. New York City is proof of that. All we do is centralize and all it does is fail. Again and again and again. And we never learn. And we never, ever learn. And it makes people unhappy with tax. In fact, Alfred comments, I like a no tax. Alfred, I agree. 
However, how do I explain this? I'll go back to family, Alfred. Alfred, I don't know your background, but for the sake of argument, I, if it's true, great. If it's not, imagine. Alfred, you decide that you're going to get married. You have a child. You have that child for 30 years. For 30 years, you keep that child and you baby them. You basically say, hey, you don't have to get a job. You don't have to work. You don't have to pay any rent. You don't have to do your own laundry. You don't have to make your bed. We'll make your bed for you. You and your spouse make the bed for your kid. You know, feed them, make food, give them money. Don't ask him anything. Now he's 30. 30 years old. And all your friends around you go, Alfred, what are you doing? Your kid's 30. He's never had a job. Doesn't know how to even do his own laundry. Does not a cook. Doesn't know how to balance a checkbook. Has no idea. What are you doing, man? You've been coddling him for years. Joe you Albany. You're right. I'm going to throw him out now. I would argue, Alfred, you throwing your son out now is cruel. Why? Because you told him he didn't have to do anything. There was no other choice. Just stay here and do this for 30 years. 12 after he was 18. So for 12 years. Taxation similar. We have told people it is the only way to have society for hundreds of years, if not more. We have to wean them off of it, as you should wean your son off. And government has done this to us, which is why you see I keep finding ways to eliminate a tax here, eliminate a tax there, eliminate another tax. If we keep eliminating taxes slowly, we wean people off of government and then society and our communities can pick up the slack to help people who need help. And right now, most of our communities are not good at it. And the COVID lockdowns prove that. You saw how many communities collapsed without government. We have to wean them off. It just isn't fair in my view. So I'd like to get what you're talking about. It's gonna take more time. Let me grab a call if I could. This is Joe from Albany. How are you? I'm doing good. I have some questions for you. I like you. I mean, I've been listening to you a little bit. Um, I, I listened to the other video you posted that was like an hour and 14 minutes about getting people into the courthouse on Friday and everything. Oh, thank you. And I really, yeah, I really like your ideas. I have a question about the taxes, though, you know? Okay. Um, it sounds to me like what you want to do if, I, if I'm reading what you're saying correctly is you want to take the tax liability and move it from the ordinary individual to corporate businesses and banks is that correct um the if you change the word tax liability what i want to do is change how we fund things from taxation to corporations that's true but there's not necessarily a tax liability that's an assumption that the only way to pay for this is through taxes. Well, will costs go up? Will they charge, like, for example, if you have, like, a restaurant chain that you do yep. this with, will the price of a cheeseburger go up? Will it, like, double or triple in price? How it's a great question. That yep. And the question is, how does that restaurant advertise? Let's assume that restaurant advertises, for the sake of argument, on TV, just for the sake of argument, and they spend $40,000 per year on TV advertisements. Well, I say, hey, don't spend money on TV advertisements. Instead, take 20,000 of that and sponsor the road on the way to your restaurant. And you'll clean it and put maintenance on it for $20,000. And they go, sure, Larry, that's a great idea. They drop $20,000 to do that. Hopefully they'll make more people come to their restaurant. But in either case, their marketing budget has not been expanded. Therefore, the price of the burger should not go up. Oh, okay. I, I saw what sense? you posted, too, about the congestion taxes, too. Yep. And that you think that's crazy. And I do, too, especially because they charge for the bridges and everything to get into Absolutely. New York City to begin with. 
Yes. What would you Literally, do with companies those like products? Google and such, these companies, yeah. their marketing budget is in the billions. I think Amazon's marketing budget is ten billion dollars. If your marketing budget is ten billion, I'm just asking for two billion to start moving some freight into New York City. So you gain, and you're only dropping two billion dollars. Well, no, the price of your socks is not going to go up. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, everything. Everything sounds real good. You know, um, I was I uh, uh, it. initially I was going in with the the idea that I had thought at the time until I started listening to Zeldin that he was. Uh, better than what we have, but I actually like your ideas better on a lot of, you know, on, on pretty much that. everything, you know. But um, well, to be well, forward, I, Zeldin doesn't have any real plans because he knows he's not going to win. He doesn't have to have any, so he just has rhetoric. His rhetoric is basically Democrats bad, more cops. That's basically his entire platform. Democrats bad, more cops. He knows he can't win. He's at least fifteen points behind, maybe twenty. So who cares? That's 20 years has been happening. The, the Republicans have been coming in second for 20 years. A lot of people don't like my ideas, but some people like them. The difference is I have them. So if someone, if I come in second, if you vote for me and I become more popular, you will have to talk about my ideas. You can fix them, make them better, keep them. Good, just fix my state so I don't have to move. I don't have to watch my friends move. Make this state better. I don't have to run anymore. That'd be awesome. But what's happening is nothing's changing. The Democrats' answer is more money, more money, more money. I hope Uncle Joe Biden will keep writing me checks. That's Democrats' answer. Neither of those is a good answer. All right. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate the call. Yeah, definitely. You have a good one. I'll call if I need anything else or if I have something for you that I want to contribute. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, guys, I hope that was clear what Joe was saying and what I was saying. And this whole taxation piece, it's tough. But we can make things better with some good ideas and, more importantly, some really good conversations. That's the most important piece. Yelling's not going to help. Am I right? Yes, of course I am. 585. 5. 346-3000. Larry Sharp, WYSL, Rochester, New York, on a free solution. Back after the break. Why do businesses choose to move their website from Wix and Squarespace to Simple Tech Innovations? Maybe it's their excellent customer service or attention to detail. Maybe it's their ability to give a truly customized solution. Or perhaps they just like the fact that Simple Tech is a local small business that builds great relationships with its clients. Whatever the reason may be, you can rest assured knowing that the local team at Simple Tech has your best interest in mind when building or updating your website. They're hands-on and love helping customers achieve their goals. But don't take my word for it. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. If your website doesn't match your dreams or isn't achieving your goals, give the professionals at Simple Tech Innovations a call today for a consultation at 585 200 3182. That's 585 200 3182. Simple Tech Innovations. Hey, this is Kevin Wilson, host of A Free Solution. You ever need a tool for just one project? but didn't want to spend the cash for something you'd use just once or twice? Well, there's a new tool library in Rochester where you can borrow just the thing you need instead of buying a new one. It's called the Tool Shed from the Southeast Area Coalition, and membership starts at just $25 a year. Use it for home projects or to support your business. Learn more and become a member at seektoolshed.org. That's S-E-A-C toolshed.org. Hi, Bob Savage here with a boost and good news for business owners and managers. We know it's been tough sledding with government working against you post-pandemic, so we've come up with a low-cost ad package, and for a limited time, once you're a WYSL advertiser, we'll run a bonus that's free, extra schedule for job openings you're trying to fill. We'll feature your business and describe the positions you have open, all at absolutely no charge. At the WYSL stations, we're not just the voice of liberty, we're the small business friend. Call 346-3000 for details. All major credit cards welcome. A free solution on the WYSL stations. Larry Sharp here on a free solution. 
WYSL, Rochester, New York. So happy that you have given me a chunk of your afternoon. We have been talking about left versus right. We've been talking about uh, taxation, schooling, all the things, centralized control, and some good ideas. And I am so happy that we're doing that. Because in most places, we can't do that. The second that we try talking, people get mad. You've seen this happen many times. I've gone on shows or on podcasts that are more left-leaning, and people are shocked that I'm even there. Why would you go to these places? Because I have to have conversation. Someone has to put their arm out to have a conversation here. I guess I don't mind getting yelled at, so I guess that's me. So, yes, any case. Let me grab a couple more of these if I can. So, all righty. Um, Lisa says, I think UBI is a fantastic idea as long as it's funded and distributed correctly. This is an important piece, Lisa. I think you're right. It has to be funded right. The problem is if you fund it via taxation, the odds of it getting passed in any way are slim to none because the average person is going to say, why am I paying taxes for somebody else? It's a valid point. So you'd have to have it to where it's funded some other way. And this is what I was talking to Joe about. You've got to have it to where either a fund or a company or an organization or something else is funding it so that people will be okay with it. Otherwise, you're going to have a backlash that there's no tomorrow. So it's a very valid point. You have to fund it the right way. Most other companies that have, sorry, most other countries, not most, many countries that have some heavy social um, safety net. Many of them have some form of fund that does this. Singapore, Norway, it's a common thing, right? So uh, she goes on to say, we are all inheritors of technology. We all deserve a dividend and the profit that technology creates. This is similar to what Yang was talking about, right? I agree with the concept. We deserve a dividend of the predisposition of resources to do with oil rights in Alaska, yes? At the very least, data rights are worth more than oil. I'm not against this concept, right? As long as we're not being taxed anymore. Why? One of the reasons why people are leaving New York State, it's a big reason, is tax burden. I still want people to get services. People still are in trouble, right? People still need things. I just want to shift the burden from a taxpayer onto others who are making so much money and are taking advantage of it, but voluntarily. I know the answer I get from the left the same. Tax the rich. Tax the rich. I get it. I get the emotion behind that. It feels good to beat up the rich guy. I get it. But there's two things. One, why would I want to use force if I don't have to, right? When they'll voluntarily pay for some value, and the government has value, so give them the value and they'll pay voluntarily. Second piece, every time we try, it fails. The wealthy always get around it. To the earlier point, we don't have a flat tax. They will always get around it. They consistently do throughout all the world. If you've noticed, almost every country has reduced or even eliminated its wealth tax. Why? It doesn't work. And in the case of New York State, it would have to be nationwide because people would just move. And I hear this from left all the time. They won't move, Larry. They're literally doing it. New York State has lost in the last couple of years about $20 billion in net worth. That's a lot. And it keeps going. So I get your point, Lisa. You've got to fund it right or it's not worth it. And I'm not a UBI fan because I don't want a check going to everybody. I want a check going to the people who need it. And then I want local people to help out so that people can move to the next level in their life. I want community support. I think community is better. So Dave says, one million students, 50,000 teachers equals social engineering. Dave, you're not wrong. <laughs> That's why they weren't, about, they weren't worried about literacy. That wasn't a thing. There we go. <laughs> yes. Adrian continues. 
literacy in school. It's brilliant. Maybe bring some math in as well. See that? Now you're thinking. We could actually do things in school like reading and math. Not too shabby. I like that idea. <laughs> I think we're doing good. Jamie says, Larry, I disagree. They will not wean off. They will just vote for people who will give them free stuff because politicians are not fiscally responsible. And Jamie, I agree with you, which is why the left-right paradigm doesn't work. It doesn't. You're right. You've got to have the third party, which is the referee. Someone's got to have some other place to go than just the other evil one. You're right. With the, with the current model, it can't work. I agree. Third parties, fourth parties, it can. Because then someone is still trying to hold others accountable. Key piece. So I hope that was clearer. Jason says, Zeldin said today he's drawing Democrats. Not sure how he thinks he's doing that. He, laughing emoji. That's not happening. I've watched his, again, I live in New York City. This morning on, on Fox 5, this commercial, Democrats against Zeldin, literally showing how he voted against, you know, um, certifying the election, how he loves Trump, how he hates Democrats, how he hates women, how he he hates abortion and he loved and he, you know, he hates women. That was like three commercials this morning, just on that. Zeldin's not drawing Democrats. That's a fantasy. If anything, if anything, Hochul is pushing some Democrats off. But there's no way. Republicans don't like Zeldin. Nobody likes Zeldin. This is, he's the Biden of the right. Nobody likes him. People pick Biden because they hated Trump. If anyone's going to pick Zeldin, it's because they hate Hochul. It's not because they like him. doesn't have any policies. He just yells things like, I'm going to win. And cops. That's it. That's all he ever does. So he's not drawing Democrats. That's a fantasy. But he might. People might go to him because they hate Hochul. But don't go to him. Go to me. Because if he comes in second, which he will, it'll be the same as always. But if I come in second, New York State changes. We get change if I come in second. The world changes if I win. I'm not even joking. Imagine for a second if New York State goes gold. The whole country changes. Not even joking. This is a big deal. It's not the greatest election of all time. It's not that. However, for this election season, for the entire season, my race is the most important race within this season. That's true. Because if I win, the most impact happens. So there we go. Hope that makes sense. Joseph says, if making all drugs, including controlled substances legal, is part of the libertarian plan, how would you keep it away from children in schools? How do you do it now? How do you do it now, Joseph? Same way? One minute. Libertarians, me, Pacific, are about what consenting adults do, not kids. We're not gonna sell kids. Same as you'd always do, it doesn't change. I would allow consenting adults to do as they feel. That's what we would do. But I'm not even talking about that. I don't think the country's ready for that. I just want to have cannabis that way. Can we do cannabis first, Joseph? And if the rest works, let's keep going. But that's what I want. Consenting adults. Both parts of that phrase are critical. I hope that makes sense. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for giving me a chunk of your afternoon. I appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon.